I am going to start with the introduction of the, historic, the history of a mechanism as well as a brief introduction to a four bar mechanism and a slider current mechanism. The mechanism is a machine that's composed of rigid members that are joined together. These members are also referred to either links or joints. Joints are formed in portions of the surface of the members joined by, by making contact with one another. A mechanism is used to transfer the motion and to produce mechanical work from one another actuators to one another to one or more outputs. Renlox came up with the term of a kinematic joint known as pair and then it's divided into two, a lower and a higher joint. The lower joint is between two bridges that occur at every point of one or more segments versus the higher one is only isolated at a point along the segment. The history. The oldest mechanism is called an antithia mechanism. It is said to be constructed in 1205 BC. In 1938, the first position of the controlling mechanism was invented for spray painting. And in the 1960s, the first industrial robots was called Unimates. Pretty much, in summary, the artisans were known, in the artisans' time, we also knew that blacksmiths and carpenters were the ones that were designing mechanisms. In the Renaissance, it was Leonardo da Vinci. And in today's age, we use civil, mechanical engineering, and also sometimes the military creates their own designs as well. We also, in our technology, in today's age, we use computers to make it more reliable, simpler for ourselves, and more convenient. In a four-bar mechanism, we also know that a member of a linkage, it is connected by the base of a loop of four joints and four links. We know that in our, in our project, we had a type one, which is a double crank. A double crank is also known as a drag crank, where the shortest link is based both, jo both joints at the base and it's fully rotational. And in a slider crank mechanism, we also have the synthesis techniques where it's composed mathematically to produce a desired set of positions and accelerate and velocities. A slider crank also has a rotational link, the coupler, and then the distance, the offset of where it's going. Thank you, and I'll keep passing it on to talk to you today about our four-bar mechanism analysis. This is a diagram of our mechanism, as well as some of the given values that we were provided with. We also chose the final two values for the links so that when we use Grashoff's rule, we would have a type 1 double crank mechanism. In this mechanism, theta 2 is the driver, and we used that to do the analysis to find theta 3 and theta 4, as well as the velocities and accelerations and the position of S. You'll notice in the graph of the acceleration with regards to theta 2, the driver, there is a spike in the velocity around 45 degrees, as well as the same spike in the velocity for theta 4, as well as in the acceleration for theta 3 and the acceleration for theta 4. There's also a sharp incline in the trajectory of S around the same point when theta 2 equals 45 degrees which I can show you in the next slide in this animation. Right when theta 2 comes around to 45 degrees, it shoots up here. We chose to do our analysis application for the toy robo. In the robo, it could be either crank wound or it could have a battery power. Here you'll see an animation of the paddle 
as it goes into the water. There's a nice fluid motion, and then it shoots up to get that last kick as it comes out, and then goes back in nice and slow, kicks out again. That would be the motion that the paddles would continue to run through as it goes on. Next, Wex will talk to you about. For the slider crank synthesis, we were given three positions for line A, B uh, on the triangular coupler link of the slider crank mechanism. And you can see the coordinates for the three positions here, and they are graphed in this grid. As you can see, this is A1, B1, A2, B2, and A3, B3. All right, we need to synthesize the mechanism. Uh, line AB had to pass through the three positions in order and could not pass through a singular position or a lockup. Uh, lockup would occur anytime the coupler was too far away from the slide and could not reach it. Uh, if these uh, conditions could not be satisfied, uh, we were allowed to move the three positions by multiples of plus or minus one inch uh, until they were satisfied. Now, our initial mathematical analysis uh, resulted in a lockup. However, we were able to make adjustments to point C1 uh, to avoid that from happening. Point C1 was a location on the circle of slides. Uh, any point on the circle of slides could have been chosen for C1. Um, and C1, along with points A1 and B1, formed the coupler. Uh, however, even once we did this and along at the lockup, uh, line AB still failed to pass through uh, the second position, A2, B2. Uh, and uh, the triangular coupler did not pass through our calculated location for point C2. We're going to see that here in the animation. You'll see we have the coupler. It does pass through A1, B1. It then fails to pass through A2, B2, but it does pass through A3, B3. Uh, you'll notice that no lockup is happening here. Uh, point C uh, does stay on the slide the entire time. So, for the slide crank synthesis, uh, we used a program called Geometry Sketchpad, which is what the previous animation was put together on. And uh, with this, we were able to very quickly relocate uh, positions 1, 2, and 3, as well as point C1, until we found a combination that would work. Uh, in the end, we ended up having to adjust positions uh, A2B2 and A3B3. Uh, for A2B2, we move the X coordinates to the left 10, and we move the Y coordinates uh, up 8. For A3B3, the X coordinates were shifted to the left 2, and the Y coordinates were shifted up 8. See this? So in this location, what you'll notice is that uh, A1B1 has been shifted up a little bit. A to B2 shifted up, and now you'll see AB passes through A1, B1, A2, B2, and in just a second, A3, B3. So we'll see that again for A1, B1. All right, and again, you'll notice that point C never leaves a slide. There is no lockup occurring here. So as far as uh, uses of a slide of crank synthesis, um, uh, one application of a simple slider crank mechanism would be an arcade coin pusher game. Uh, the way this game works is there is a pile of coins on a platform, and the back edge of the platform sweeps forward uh, it continuously back and forth, uh, pushing against the pile of coins. If any coins fall into the pit, they, became, they become the player's winnings. Uh, the slider crank mechanism is ideal for this because it is a very simple mechanism. It uh, does not have many parts uh, and just one motor. And because the weight being pushed only consists of a pile of coins, which uh, shouldn't weigh too much, that should not place a great deal of stress on the motor itself. If this platform is pushing against a much uh, larger weight, then what you would most likely end up using instead of a slider crank mechanism would be some sort of a hydraulic system, uh, which you will see uh, in trash compactors or soil compactors or car crushers, for example. So in conclusion, for the analysis of our four-bar mechanism, we found that it was a rather straightforward process. We really didn't have any problems, except uh, some of our calculations did involve an inverse tangent, and that always resulted in measures between negative 90 and positive 90 degrees. Well, since the four-bar mechanism does rotate through 360 degrees, we occasionally had to make minor adjustments adding multiples of 180 degrees. 
uh, four bar mechanisms as far as their applications go, uh, can be used to create non circular paths, all based on a circular motion of the crank. When it comes to the synthesis of the slide of crank mechanism, what we found is that it was not necessarily a straightforward process, and our mathematical solutions uh, might not meet the required conditions. And in our case, uh, this did happen, and it required uh, some manipulation and trial and error. Okay? Um, when it comes to the uh, applications of a slider crank mechanism, uh, they can be used to create a back and forth linear motion, again, based on a circular motion of the crank. Uh, this concludes our report on the analysis of a four-bar mechanism and the synthesis of a slider crank mechanism.